A las barricadas, a las barricadas, por el triunfo de la confederación. A las barricadas, a las barricadas, for the triumph of definite integration. For the triumph of definite integration. So what we will see today is our first application of definite integrals, which will be to calculate the area between curves. Now it's a pretty straightforward application because this is pretty much how we defined definite integrals uh, in the first place. But still, we'll see that it can get quite interesting. Right, so many of you probably don't know uh, what the song I just sang is, so I encourage you to look it up. So on Wikipedia, uh, the name of the song is A las Barricadas, or To the Barricades in Spanish. It's a very important song. Uh, and there's also a really nice recording of it on YouTube, uh, which dates back to the Spanish Civil War. Enjoy! Okay, so suppose that I want to find the area of the region bounded by two curves, y equals f of x and y equals g of x, and two vertical lines, x equals to a and x equals to b. Okay, so I have a curve, say something like that, y equals to f of x, and I have another one, y equals to g of x, that may look like this. And for this first example, I'm going to assume that f of x is greater or equal to g of x over the interval a to b, and we'll relax this assumption later on. And I have the two vertical lines, x equals to a, and x equals to b, and I'm interested in the region bounded by these curves, so I want to calculate the area of the region shaded in orange. So we know how to do that. What we're going to do is slice the region into rectangles of equal width, so into n rectangles of equal width. To, that will first give us a good approximation of the area and then we'll send the number of rectangles to infinity to get a precise calculation of the area. So let's see what this looks like. So I'm going to take the right point rule. So my rectangles are such that the right point, lower and upper point, lie on the curves. Right, so the width is the same. So for each rectangle, the width will be delta x, which is just b minus a over the number of rectangles. As for the height, well, looking at the rectangles, I see that the Height will be given by f of xi minus g of xi, where xi is the x-coordinate of the right endpoint of my rectangles. All right, and then I can form a Riemann sum, as we've done before, by just adding up the areas of the rectangle. So that will be the sum from i running from 1 to n of the areas. So this is the height. All right times the width, and that gives us a good approximation of the area, but that's not a true calculation of the area, so to get the area, what we need to do is take the limit where we send the number of rectangles to infinity, or in other words the width to zero, so the area A will be given by the limit as n goes to infinity of the Riemann sum, so sum from i1 to n of f of xi minus g of xi delta x. But what is this? Well, we recognize that this is just a definite integral. By definition of definite integrals, they're given as n going to infinity limits of Riemann sums. So this is really just the definite integral from a to b, but now the function is f of x minus g of x times dx. Right, so in other words, what we've just shown here is that to calculate the area enclosed by these curves, what I need to do is calculate a definite integrals running from a to b of the function f of x minus g of x, and this will be true whenever f of x is greater or equal to g of x over the interval. All right, this is very cool, but do we really need to reconstruct the Riemann sum every single time that we want to calculate the area of a region? Well, not really, because now we know that it's going to be given by a definite integral, so we can somehow construct the definite integral directly without going through the Riemann sum. So let me show you how I would do that. So if I want to calculate this area, instead of constructing the Riemann sum, what I would do is draw a typical rectangle, by which I mean just one slice uh, of all the slices that I use for the Riemann sum, and then I would calculate its area. So first I would calculate its width, so the width here of a typical rectangle would be dx, which means delta x, but when I send delta x to zero size, I call it dx. The height of the typical rectangle will be the difference in the y-coordinate of the top minus the y-coordinate of the bottom. 
And now I'm going to call, uh, introduce something that I call DA, which means the area of a typical rectangle. So this is just the height times the width. And then I know that to calculate the area A, what I need to do is to sum over all typical rectangles, so all rectangles, and summing in this language becomes an integral. So I sum the areas DA of all rectangles from the left endpoint of my interval, which is A, to the right endpoint, which gives me the definite integral that I'm interested in. All right, so what I've done here is just kind of streamline the process for constructing the definite integrals without going through the Riemann sum. But what we're doing here really is just doing the same thing, but without going through the whole uh, Riemann sum with n rectangles and taking the limit as n goes to infinity. So it's just a kind of faster way of constructing the definite integrals that gives the area for this type of problems. All right, let me now look at the more general case where f of x is not necessarily greater or equal to g of x over the whole interval. So I could have a function f of x looking like this, y equals f of x, and g of x could be something like, I don't know, something like this, y equals g of x. And then I'll take x equals to a to be here, and x equals to b to be here. And I want to calculate the region enclosed by these curves. So this region really has two different parts. There's this part and there's this part. So let me call the first one S1 and the second one S2. So how do I calculate the area of this region? Well, the idea here is going to be to calculate first the area of S1 and then the area of S2 and add them up to get the total area. Okay, so let's do that. So if I first look at the region S1, well, I'm going to first introduce a letter C for the x-coordinate of the point of intersection here. All right, so now for to calculate the area of S1, what I'll do is just draw a typical rectangle. And the area of my typical rectangle will be the width times the height. So what is the height here? Well, the height is the y-coordinate of the top function minus the y-coordinate of the bottom function. But the top function in this case is g of x, while the bottom one is f of x. So I get g of x minus f of x for the height times the width, which is dx. And then the area of that region will be given by summing over typical rectangles, which means integrating. But now I'm integrating from the left uh, side, which is a, to the point of intersection, which is c, of the area of the typical rectangles. So I'll get this integral here for the area of the subregion s1. And I can do the same thing for s2. Now what do I get? Well, I need to calculate the area of a typical rectangle. If I draw my typical rectangle here, I see that the height is different because now the top function is f of x and the bottom function is g of x. So I get f of x minus g of x times the width dx. And the area of this region is given by summing over typical rectangles from c to b. So this will be the expression. So you see that both regions have different expressions, the area of, of both regions have different expressions in terms of definite integrals because it depends whether f of x is greater or equal to g of x or g of x is greater or equal to f of x. And finally, to calculate the total area, I just add them up. So I get that total area being equal to a1 plus a2. All right, so this is what you want to do if you have a general case where f of x is not, strict, uh, not necessarily greater or equal to g of x over the full interval. What you do is you split the region into subregions where either f of x is greater or equal to g of x or g of x is greater or equal to f of x. Now, in fact, you can streamline this whole process again because you can realize that for uh, any of these regions, dA, which is the area of a typical rectangle, will always be given by the absolute value of f of x minus g of x times dx. Now, these two expressions here will be different because the absolute value will be different depending on whether f of x is greater or equal to g of x or not. But this is kind of a general statement for any region. And then you can write the area in full generality as being the integral from a to b of this area for the typical rectangles. So this expression here is valid regardless of whether f of x is greater or equal to g of x over the whole interval. But however, in practice, you can start with that, but to actually calculate this integral, in any case, you need to split the integral into subregions where you can replace the absolute value by either f of x minus g of x or g of x minus f of x. So in practice, it amounts to doing exactly the same calculation as what we've just explained.
All right, so let me summarize all of this in this slide. So the area A of a region S between the curves y equals f of x, y equals g of x, and the vertical lines x equals to a and x equals to b, with a less or equal to b, is given by the integral, the definite integral from a to b, of the area of the typical rectangles, which is going to be the absolute value of f of x minus g of x, times dx. All right, and if it happens that f of x is greater or equal to g of x over the whole interval, then you can get rid of the absolute value because f of x is always greater or equal to g of x, so the argument of the absolute value is always positive, and you get the expression that we first derived. But in the general case, what you want to do is split your region S into smaller subregions, S1 to Sn, such that for each of these subregions, either f of x is greater or equal to g of x, or g of x is greater or equal to f of x. And then you can replace the absolute value for each of these regions with the corresponding expression, calculate the definite integrals, and add up the areas to get the area of the full region. All right, so let me work through a specific example. Suppose you want to calculate the area between the line y equals 2x plus 5 and the parabola y equals x squared plus 2 for x between 0 and 6. So the first thing you may want to do is sketch a graph of the situation to see what the region you're interested in actually looks like. So first the parabola here opens upwards and it's uh, shifted in the y direction, so its graph would look like something like this. All right, so this is the graph of the parabola y equals x squared plus 2. As for the line, well, I know that it will intersect the y-axis at the point 0, 5, and the slope is 2, it's positive, so it will look like something like that. All right, and then uh, I want to find the region between x equals to 0, so x equals to 0 is this y-axis here, and x equals to 6. But I don't know whether x equals to 6 is on the left of the point of intersection or on the right. right? So the first thing I may want to do here is calculate the coordinates of the point of intersection to figure out uh, what region I'm interested in. All right, so how do I get that? Well, the point of intersection is a point that lies on both curves, so the y coordinates must be the same, so I can equate the right-hand sides here. I get x squared plus 2 is equal to 2x plus 5, which is a quadratic equation. That's x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals to 0, and this factors out as x minus 3 times x plus 1. All right, so there's two points of intersection, x equals to 3 and x equals to minus 1. But the one that I'm interested in is the one on the positive side, so the x coordinate here will be 3. And I can find the y, uh, the y coordinate just by plugging x equals 3 in, there, uh, in, in either equation, and I get 11. All right, but the key point here is that this is x equals to 3. So if I'm interested in the region between x equals to 0 and x equals to 6, well, x equals to 6 will lie somewhere like here, right? So this would be x equals to 6. So in fact, the region here has two different subregions, right? So the first one here I'm going to call S1, and the second one I'm going to call S2. All right, so what I'll do now is calculate the area of S1 first, then the area of S2, and add them up to get the area of the full region. All right, so let's start with the region S1. All right, so I need to draw my typical rectangle. Looks like something like this. So the area of a typical rectangle, so DA1, will be the height times the width. The height here, so this is the y coordinate of the top function minus the lower functions. So I could rewrite that as y top minus y bottom if I want, times the width, which is dx y top is the line in this case, so I'll get 2x plus 5 for the top function, and the bottom function in this case is the parabola, so it's x squared plus 2 times dx. So that gives me, simplifying a little bit, that gives me minus x squared plus 2x plus 3dx. And finally I can get the area a1 of the first region. Now I want to integrate from 0, the left point, to the point of intersection, because this is where the first region ends. So this is 3 of the A. All right, and that gives me, while well, I use the fundamental theorem of calculus, get minus x cubed over 3 plus 2x squared over 2 plus 3x between 0 and 3. 
And that will give me some answer, whatever this is. So this is minus 27 over 3 plus 9 plus 9, which is some number. All right, so this is for A1. And now I need to do the same thing for the region S2. So again, I'm going to draw my typical rectangle. That's for the second region here. Get something like that. And then the area of a typical rectangle would be the height times the width. So in this case, the height will be y top minus y bottom, but the top function is now x squared plus 2, and the bottom function is the line. So I get this expression for the area of the typical rectangle, which again simplifies as x squared minus 2x minus 3 dx, and then the area of the second region is given by summing over rectangles from the left point, which is 3, to the right point, which is 6, of dA. And again, I could evaluate that, so I just find the antiderivative and calculate, and I'll get a number for A2. All right, and then the final answer would be the total area A, which will be A1 plus A2, and if I finish the calculation here, I'll get some number for A1 and some number for A2, which I can add up, and that will give me the total area for the region. All right, so let me work through a second example. Suppose you want to calculate the area between the curve x equals 20 minus y squared and y equals to x. Well, let's first sketch the graph of these curves. So y equals to x is a straight line going through the origin with slope 1, while the other curve is going to be a parabola, opening left in the left direction, and shifted, so it looks like something like that, where the point here has coordinates 20 and 0. And there's two points of intersection here between the two curves, and the area I'm interested in is the area of the region enclosed by the two curves. All right, so how can I calculate it? Well, I could try to do the same thing as I did before, which is to basically slice the area into vertical rectangles, and then calculate the area of a typical rectangle and write down the definite integral and evaluate. Now, it is possible to do so, and I, you can try it as an exercise, but you see you'll run into trouble. It's not so easy. And the reason is because the first curve here, x equals to 20 minus y squared, is not actually the graph of a function of x. It's given as x as a function of y. So it turns out that in this case, there's a better way of doing the calculation. And the idea is to, instead of slicing the area into vertical rectangles, we're going to slice it into horizontal rectangles. We can certainly do that. I mean, it makes sense, right? We can just calculate the area by summing horizontal rectangles if we want. And it turns out that in this case, this is going to be a lot easier. All right, so we're going to do what we call horizontal slicing instead of vertical slicing here. But the process goes in a very similar way. So what I'll do is basically write down a typical rectangle. Then I'll find the height of the typical rectangle. Now the height is the thing that I'm going to be summing over. So I'll call that dy, meaning delta y, but sending delta y to 0. So the height of a typical rectangle will be dy. The width of the typical rectangle here will be the x-coordinate of the function on the right minus the x-coordinate of the function on the left, right? This is the x-coordinate of the function on the right, and this is the x-coordinate of the function on the left. And for the whole region, I see that the parabola is the function on the right, and the line is the function on the left. So that becomes x right is just 20 minus y squared, and x left will be minus y. So we have to write everything in terms of y here, because we're going to be summing in the y direction. So in other words, the area of a typical rectangle, dA, will be the width times the height. So that's 20 minus y squared minus y times dy. And then to calculate the area, I want to sum uh, over these rectangles in the y direction. So I need to know what is the lowest y coordinate of my region and the highest y coordinate of my region. So I need to basically find what these points of intersection are. So how do I do that? Well, I just do the same thing as I did before. So to find the points of intersection, I'm just equating the two uh, equations here. So I'll get an equation for y. I'll get 20 minus y squared is equal to y. Or in other words, I get a quadratic equation minus y squared minus y plus 20 is equal to 0. Or if I want, I could rewrite it like this. 
which I can then factor. And what do I get? I'll get y, I guess, plus 5, and y minus 4 for the two factors. So in other words, the y coordinates of the intersection points will be y equals to 4 and y equals to minus 5. So this point here has y coordinate minus 5, but because y equals to x also has x coordinate minus 5, and this point has y coordinate 4 and x coordinate 4. So now I know that the total area will be given by summing over the typical rectangles from the lowest y coordinate, which is minus 5, to the, 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 the highest y coordinate of the region, this is 4. So that gives me a definite integral from minus 5 to 4 of the expression 20 minus y squared minus y dy. All right, so the point here is that if you're given a region, uh, if you're interested in the, calculating the area of a region, which is given uh, in terms of curves that are actually curves, uh, are the graph of functions in terms of y, it may make more sense. It's going to be easier to use horizontal slicing instead of vertical slicing, which means that you want to write everything in terms of y for your typical rectangles, and then for the definite integral, you want to integrate in the y direction or sum in the y direction, so you get an integral in terms of the y coordinate. All right, so this vertical versus horizontal slicing can be summarized as follows. So first, if you're given a region which is defined in terms of curves, say y equals f of x and y equals g of x, and some vertical lines x equals to a and x equals to b, then to calculate the area of the region here, while well, you just do standard vertical slicing, draw your typical rectangle. The width is dx, which you will be summing over. The height is the difference between the y-coordinate of the top function minus the y-coordinate of the bottom function. And in generality, in full generality, you end up with the area of the typical rectangle as being the absolute value of f of x minus g of x times the width, dx. And the full area is given by summing over rectangles uh, from the left most x value of the region and the rightmost x value of the region. So you integrate from a to b the area of each typical rectangle. If on the other hand you're given a region in terms of uh, curves of the form say x equals to f of y and x equals to g of y and perhaps some value y equals a or y equals b or some intersection point in this case, then uh, it is easier to use horizontal slicing. So you draw your horizontal rectangles. In this case, the height is what you're summing over, so we call it dy. The width is going to be the difference between the x-coordinate of the rightmost function and the x-coordinate of the leftmost function. So in full generality, the area of the typical rectangle is the absolute value of f of y minus g of y times the height dy. And to get the total area here, we want to sum from the lowest y-coordinate of the region to the highest y-coordinate of the region. So it's horizontal slicing, we're doing everything in terms of y and we end up with the definite integral from y equals a to y equals b of the area of each typical rectangles. All right, so this summarizes how you can calculate the area between curves using definite integrals. Now all you have to do is work through a whole bunch of examples.